Okay, well let's do a quick tutorial on lighting and uh, I'll preface by saying hopefully you'll find some much better ones online for iClone because I am certainly no expert uh, when they added the new feature of uh, global illumination. I am still learning for sure and a lot of folks online are actually helping me out too. But let's start with the blank project and let's just see how things uh, are going to line up here. Uh, let's just... Uh, Put a little content in here. Some of the older G5 characters. So I'll just load a character in. Uh, we'll load a, a landscape, which is a, a prop, but I'm going to convert it to a landscape. And uh, we'll, yeah, there we go. We see that he is up. Oh, okay, it's not a landscape. You notice he is simply reacting to the grid. Uh, as he goes down, there's the grid on, and you can see the landscape is below. So what I'm going to do is turn on the uh, terrain. I'm going to click on the terrain, which is a prop, and convert it to a terrain. And uh, now notice our character, when he touches the terrain, his feet actually touch, and he is below the grid. Now uh, also notice uh, that his shadow is not lining up with the terrain. Uh, it's hitting the grid. And one way, one way we can uh, eliminate that is turn off what we call the shadow catcher, which is a great feature. It's been added. We'll talk about that maybe later, but let's turn that off. And now uh, the shadow pretty much looks like it's uh, colliding with the terrain correctly. We'll turn off our grid, control G. And so we've got our character. Uh, Let's uh, add some trees just to give it a little interest. And uh, go over here to our trees. And da -da -da, there we are. Here's some acacias. I kind of like the, the gnarly look of acacias. They may not be appropriate for your landscape, but for our purposes, we'll go ahead and use them just so we have some things to cast shadows. Uh, and that's always a good thing. Here we go. Okay, so we've got our character. Uh, we've got that. We've got uh, now uh, we don't have a sky, and so let's go over here to visual and let's look at what we've got. Now, let's go ahead and make sure we go ahead and turn on uh, the global illumination feature so it'll display in our viewport. And uh, things are kind of being lit right now by this image map. Now, uh, notice we can turn that image map on. And it provides a background sky, but it certainly would not be appropriate for a sky. Uh, you've got some options, uh, I believe, in iClone. But I found a, uh, a free website. And let me just jump over here to my browser. Here's a free website, hdri-skies.com. And these are free. You can buy higher resolutions if you want to pay for them. But for our purposes right now, you can select... You do have to uh, create an account, uh, but as far as I can tell, it's free. So I've downloaded some of these uh, files to use as my sky. So uh, our IBL, uh, image-based lighting. So uh, let's turn on, uh, let's double-click, or you can go to another different way. I'm just going to double-click. Now these are some of the ones I've downloaded. Uh, the kicker is I don't see thumbnails, which is a little bit of a pain, but... Uh, you can just click on them, and uh, there we go. There's one there, kind of like. So uh, we now have a uh, image that uses sky. Now we can turn the blur. Obviously, we don't want it to be too blurry. But now that image is now providing some illumination for our scene. Uh, like so. So we can do that. I don't like to have a whole lot of that. You've got to use that really sparingly. And uh, let's now go back and take a look at our scene and see what's going on here light-wise. Uh, you've got automatically two lights are always generated. You've got a rim light uh, and a key light, which is basically the sun, and a rim to provide a little fill. Uh, so uh, let's turn that on. Uh, if you click the eyebrow there, uh, you should have, I'm going to hit the E key, and now I have control with my mouse, left and right mouse buttons. 
Yeah, we can control that sun. Uh, I'm going to bump that up a little bit. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to select the key light, modify, and notice uh, the multiplier is at uh, 0.3. I'm going to go 1.3 and pop it up. And uh, looks a little more like sun to my eyes anyway. And now, of course, with your mouse control, you can adjust that uh, a little bit. So now we've got a little brighter sun. Uh, and once again, we're not doing a whole lot. I've taken that strength down. Uh, I don't like a lot. Of it. it flattens it out, which is okay in some situations. It's a cloudy day, but on a sunny day, you're going to have deep shadows. And I like to have deep shadows if you've got a sunny day. So uh, that's one thing there you can do. Uh, you can uh, adjust the sky. Uh, right down here, transform, hit this key, and now we can spin our sky around. We can actually uh, animate it as well. If you uh, set your position, then scroll down to the end of your scene, and uh, now uh, it will animate, as you can see, and it's, it can be very subtle, but uh, nice to have a little bit of a moving sky in your scene, so you can do that with that particular feature. Uh, I'm going to turn it off for now, but uh, there you go. So yeah, be sure that uh, you know you can adjust your sky, and that's a real cool thing. Uh, just hit that key there and spin it around to get the appropriate look that you want. Uh, and obviously this sky might not be totally appropriate for our sun, but uh, we can adjust that some more. Just click on our character now to turn that visual reference for the key light off. Do it there. And once again, as I said, there's another light. You can always add lights, of course, but these two are created at the beginning of the scene. Uh, obviously, you can multiply it uh, some more, add more light. Typically, you wouldn't want two shadows when you've got basically sunlight. You only want one shadow, so uh, make sure the key light, which is pretty much your sun, uh, is the only one with shadow turned on. And that will then give you some nice shadows and give dimension to your scene. Uh, and notice, you see, you've got a nice sky, a 360 sky there, which uh, works pretty good, uh, like so. So uh, you've got a lot of control when you're in this particular mode, global illumination mode, uh, that you can play with. And uh, feel free to do that. Uh, once you go over here, uh, settings here. Uh, now, ambient strength. Once again, I don't like a lot of ambient strength, and it, it defaults to black, so you're not going to see anything. Uh, in sunlight, typically your shadows are blue due to the blue sky, so you want to try to get a blue, bluish color if you were going to add some ambient light to it. And this basically, and it's pretty subtle right there. Let me crank it up some more. Let me make a selection and then slide it up. Here we go. Got a slight blue tinge. And now you can see it. But once again, I just think it flattens things out. It just all depends on the look you're after, uh, how much ambient you want. But I typically don't like a lot of ambience. Uh, the bouncing off of the landscape and the trees, this is controlled here. And once again, I would be very subtle with that. Uh, shadow details, how much you want to see in the shadow. You should be able to see a little bit popping in there, a little more detail in the shadow. Uh, you know, it all depends. Once again, just play with these. Uh, and see what they do. I can't really tell you. There are other tutorials that will give you a lot more detailed information. Uh, Multi-bounce and all that. Uh, multiple objects bouncing off things. Tracing uh, for highlights. Uh, once again, just be very sparingly with this. Play with it till you get a look that you kind of like and uh, go with it for the scene. But uh, we're getting, getting pretty close there uh, to, I think, a, a decent look. Now let's go back to our key light and to our modification of our key light. And uh, once again, you notice that we adjusted it to 1.3, which is great. Uh, here we go, the uh, darkness of our shadows. Once again, I like, you know, on a sunny day, you're going to have deep shadows. And uh, once again, that can be adjusted there. You can also uh, work with your shadows here in the visual tab under shadows. And I usually like to crank this up as high as I can to get more accurate shadows. So the shadows are lining up and looking sharp in the details. Uh, and once again, just play with this to get a look you like. Uh, soft shadows 
are fine. Uh, once again, depending on your video card. So uh, make your adjustments there. But give yourself a go. I would certainly adjust, uh, hit, suppress, shadow flicker. You, you'll probably see that when you render your scene. So let's uh, click that on for now. Uh, here is a bias adjustment, which uh, can help your shadows line up. Sometimes if this is not correct, uh, you could, uh, let's, the shadows will do squirrely things. So, uh, and uh, you just want to make sure, I usually try to get it as close to zero as possible. Uh, it'll just make sure that the shadows line up with your uh, prop or avatar. And uh, that's typically where you adjust. If the shadow's offset in some respect, then it'll play with the bias. And that should bring it back into alignment with your character. Okay, here's another quick scene I whipped up. Uh, get an idea. Same uh, kind of lighting situation went on here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to bring this around. Notice uh, the sky is, we've got a little bit of a, a glow there going on. Uh, that is controlled over here. Once again, in the visual tab, and uh, uh, ambient occlusion uh, adds a little darkness into the shadows. And once again, you got to play with this to get what you like if you want to use that. Uh, just adds a little more realism to it. Uh, might want to put a little bit of a slight fog, and you can color that fog. Puts a little haze in the background. Once again, very realistic to have a haze uh, in the distance. So you might want to play with these numbers and. Uh, have a little fog back there. Uh, this controls that blooming effect and uh, causing the sky to have a glow to it. And once again, use it very sparingly uh, uh, in the scene. But uh, you can create a real, uh, a rather realistic look uh, to your scene, uh, like so. And it'll depend on which way the camera is facing as to how it's going to look. So do the tree here. And once again, let's break it down and take a look at the scene. Uh, we've got our light here. And basically, we've just got one light going on. Uh, obviously, we're using the global illumination. And let's go over here and take a look. This is our sky. Uh, very little strength there. Very little. I'll just give it a little bit. Um, Obviously, no blur on the sky. Uh, we've uh, rotated it. Uh, obviously, if you didn't want to see this portion of the uh, landscape, you can adjust uh, the sky settings and position it in the z-axis, up and down, lower, change the scale. So uh, if you want to re size the sky, you can do that here. And uh, just click on sky settings and that'll do that. And obviously there we go. But uh, once again, adjusting the key light is really key, as it were. Uh, let's go back here to scene. Let's make sure we select our key. And I'm going to hit the E key. And notice and now my uh, left mouse button my right mouse button. Now both mouse buttons together obviously can adjust where it is on the horizon. So uh, noon, early morning, then uh, positioning left and right there. Mouse key. Makes a huge difference. So uh, there are some ideas to at least get you started on lighting. Uh, these lights, as I say, come with the scene. You can uh, choose not to use them. Create your own lights, you see. Uh, but once again, if it's a daylight scene, I don't like to have but one light that has the shadows uh, on. So it's just one in this no shadows for this rim light. I haven't even turned it on. The rim light basically will give you a little bit of fill, but the bottom line is with global illumination you probably don't need a lot of fill because you can control uh, that uh, in your setting here as to how much bounce you've got 
off of objects. They provide that will help provide the fill light you would need to take care of the deep shadows. Sometimes you don't want deep shadows, but shadows give defin definition to a scene, and so you really want to have nice, uh, nice shadows in your shot. So uh, that was the basics, real basic. Hope that helps.